And when you put that all together, what you get is this. This is the result. Everything cleaned up, everything shiny. The new plug that I mentioned. The knobs have got their sparkle back. Piano keys are perfectly cleaned and polished. The rim has been polished. You can finally read what's on there. Now what I've done is after polishing that and cleaning it, I've sprayed a bit of uh, lacquer on it, transparent lacquer, non-gloss, just to preserve it so it doesn't blemish again. The only part that I'm not absolutely happy with is the the grill cloth, which uh, after cleaning, there's stains there that I couldn't get out. That's the best I can do. The body itself didn't have any major damage, so I just did some polishing to try and preserve that piano finish, the gloss. And that's it so far. The one task left over, of course, is the turntable. So I better get on with that. A subscriber of mine once said that, uh, recently said that um, I'm probably the guy who loses the most video that he's known so far. And actually, I'm probably the guy who loses the most video that I've known so far. What you see here is the result after quite a few stages that I videoed and lost the video footage for, but I'll go through it just to give you a recap. This thing was, as expected, in pretty abysmal condition. Um, the first obvious thing is that this top section here has been cleaned as opposed to the right-hand side, which has not. And you can see the results coming out quite nicely. This is a, a color that's rather difficult to reproduce now. So I'm going to get away with it. I think I'm going to get away with just cleaning it. And I use this with some isopropyl, well, actually with some uh, normal dishwasher, dish cleaner, and really scrub it, not too far, not too hard, so you don't get through to, you don't go through the paint, but enough that um, all that surface crud comes out. And the result is actually quite acceptable. There are a few parts I need to clean here still, but it's coming out all right. The same has happened with this part of the arm, which I've cleaned. That part has not been cleaned yet. And the underside, there wasn't that much wrong with it. Obviously, as expected, this belt is gone. And I'm looking for one in, at the moment. Not sure that I'm going to find it. This uh, is dead. So that's got to come off completely, but there's not much there, right? Here we have the speed control on the left here, which is purely mechanical, and it has one of these. Try not to lose the screw. And then other than that, there's very, there are very few moving parts. We have the motor down here, an AC motor, a motor start capacitor, which I hope is in good shape. I haven't tried plugging it in yet. I'm doing some um, basic cleaning and lubricating first so that um, I'm certain these things are not going to rattle themselves to death. The shaft over there is connected to that uh, rubber band, the rubber belt. That rubber belt goes around here. And then, as far as speed control, obviously this is regulated by the AC frequency, 60, uh, 50 hertz here. And the way you adjust this, so as I rotate this for the different speeds, that's raising that whole section over here. And the result is that it 
moves the position on that shaft over there for different diameters so you get the different speeds on the wheel and that's how you adjust your speed for the uh, the speed that you want on your turntable so what we have over here is pretty simple as well the mains comes in here one of these solder tags goes straight through to the motor to one side of the motor the other one goes out to the sky and comes back and that goes to that switch which is this switch over here and that switch is made when these two contacts come in touch with this little piece of metal over there at the moment what we can see also is another contact over here shorting out these three and these three are the ground, the left and the right signal from your from your needle goes down into the shaft over there. So when this uh, turntable is not turning, when it's off, the um, signal from the gramophone is actually shorter to ground so you don't have any noise going into your gramophone input of the radio. When it's on, this thing moves up, releases that short and makes the contact here so your motor can start spinning. So it's very simple and I'll try and demonstrate here. There's the, sh the connection made. There's the connection unmade. Made. Well, there, that's made. That's removed. Now, these guys here are not making proper contact, so I need to correct that, but I'll show you on the upside what I'm doing. The way this works is to get this thing started, you move your needle back. That makes that contact. When it gets to the end, it opens the contact. So basically, you switch on your motor by going that way, you switch off your motor by going that way. And fortunately, there isn't that much of a mechanical um, puzzle going on here. So it's quite easy to, to see how it works on the underside and it's all in place. I mean, some of the springs had jumped out. It was just a matter of uh, putting them back in place, but it seems to be working. I just need to do some cleaning and I need to check out these uh, these things are connected on here with springs so that there's some sort of suspension. I see some of the rubbers on the motor are dead. Some of the rubber grommets that uh, suspend the motor are dry, so I need to replace those. And then I'll be ready to test this thing. This thing has got, um, there's a ground and left and right signal going to this DIN plug. This cable is pretty stiff and it's been pinched as far as I can see over there. So I'll probably need to replace this, make it a little bit easier to work with, and then try, try it out. All right. The one thing you've got to be careful with is these connectors. They have 220 volt mains on there, or 240. So because there's a screw on here, if you inadvertently touch that, you get yourself a nasty surprise. So I just put a bit of masking tape or insulation tape around the screws. So that's now in place. Everything else is in place. Minus that appendage at the back, which really was doing nothing. And it turned out very, very well. I wired the uh, speakers back on. Okay, so we have the phono reinstalled. There are a few things here that I need to point out that aren't definitive. The one is the uh, the mat, obviously, that's temporary. And the other thing is the belt. This is the belt that was in there and it's completely dead. So I have to try and get another one. Um, I'm not sure where, but I'll find it. But for now, I've uh, used a trick that I've used before, which is, well, I suppose quite amusing. It's actually a condom 
that you cut a strip of and you have yourself a pretty strong um, belt. I suppose uh, there are multiple uses for those things. Anyway, this is working, but um, the other point is the needle is a total mess. There is a needle in there, but it's definitely not in good shape. But let me show you how this thing operates. Now, to turn it on, I do that. And as you can probably hear, that belt is a little noisy. And to put it off, you go to that extreme. Simple as that. Your speed is controlled here. Let's put it on. Forty-five off thirty-three. There's a sixteen at the top off. So all the mechanics and the electrics is actually working, and you can hear the uh, thump as it goes through. Now the needle is a mess, as I said, but I have something that matches it perfectly. So for a messed up needle, we have a messed up record. This record is a total mess, so I'm not too worried about it. And it's going to jump like crazy. It's going to sound terrible, but... So I don't want to mess it up more than I have to. But it's working, sort of. So, uh, needle, the mat and the uh, belt. But otherwise, this thing's complete. And it's looking sharp. So here it is. Back is finished. Everything's been cleaned, put back together, new screws on here. It's looking good. This back uh, panel was in very good condition. I have given this uh, dark area a coat of uh, paint. What I use is water-based acrylic. Artist's paint, it dries quite quickly and it's uh, pretty thick, so usually one coat is enough. That's it. Let's do a reception test and, um, and that'll conclude this series. Time for our final reception test. Broadcast band, medium wave. A ver dónde está el vídeo. Eh, Godín, cuando se al público, y dijo, se queda, se queda. Sí, bueno, también lo dijo Piqué de Neymar. Sí, <ríe> bueno, sí. acabó. Claro, bueno, está claro. Entonces, eh... Formación de información, información. De la tarde de hoy. El futbolista le ha dicho al Atlético de Madrid que quiere seguir en el Atlético de Madrid. Nos dimos en boca y de conducir bastante bien eh, hace unos años. Muy, muy al final, porque no puedes tampoco apretar tanto los... También las estrategias públicas de comunicación deben tener en cuenta este... Y esto es lo que ha pasado. 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 Y
Ha sido muy, muy, muy sincero. Radurian, esta noche eh, los estudios de Radio Rumanía Internacional se visten de gala con la presencia de nuestro amigo. vida y de su vida personal. Buenas noches, Carlos. Bienvenido. Dans le service. Oui, parce qu'il n'y a pas de client, je n'ai pas jugé. El, el, el gran jugador que, que, que estuvo en el Arsenal hace al final se han decantado por una Yemen Well that's it what we saw here was Quite a bit on uh, medium wave. This is uh, 7.30 p.m. So the lower shortwave bands are very, very little. Shortwave 1, there was nothing. Um, shortwave 2, you start getting something around 9 megahertz. Shortwave 3, well, this time of the day is when you get most of reception. And some of it on shortwave 4, up to about 18.5 megahertz. What we find is that um, it's actually very, very clear when you are in the band that's uh, that's most active uh, during the time of the day that you're listening. So uh, we have a pretty sensitive receiver here. And uh, overall, I'm very, very happy with the result. That's it. We've got ourselves a very, very good AM receiver, which goes from the 550 to to 1.8 on the uh, medium wave and then it starts at about 1.8 short wave all the way through to about 27.6 megahertz so this really does span practically the entire band which is pretty impressive the magic eye is working great um, everything is responding very well the the uh, fine tuning function works these uh, Preset tone controls work, tone controls work there as well. So overall, I'm very, very happy with the result. Now, the principal use that this radio is going to be put to, because it has no FM, it really isn't that useful until you get one of these or something similar. This is a very simple and very inexpensive Bluetooth receiver, Bluetooth 4.1. And what it does is it receives Bluetooth from any device that you pair it with. In this case, I'm pairing it with the, uh, the iPad. And it will then play that music or that sound, that audio, on your speakers, provided you put it on phono. Okay. Check the pairing on this. If you go to the Bluetooth settings, we have BT B7 connected. That's, I know, is that device. I can now go to my audio and I've chosen a royalty-free bit of music here, play it, put 
the volume up. And there we have it. I can control the volume from here. And of course I've got the controls that are related to the audio here as well, like volume. Presets as well. So what I've got here really is a Bluetooth speaker and amplifier, uh, which becomes really really useful, especially if you've got uh, kids at home, and uh, it gives this radio a completely uh, new uh, use and complete new life. So. Hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, series. Um, this one has been a long time coming. It's been quite a while since I did uh, a restoration. Um, honestly, these things are an enormous amount of work to do, and it just makes it that much harder when you're doing these things and you have to film and remember to film, and then you, you end up with uh, lost footage and you have to do all the editing. And I do enjoy that, but sometimes I just want to focus on the restoration, which is why in some cases um, I haven't uh, uploaded the results. Also, doing them is always interesting for me. Um, repeating radios that I've done before, like recently I did a uh, Grundig uh, 3060, I think it was, or 3020, which I'd done before. It really becomes a little bit monotonous to anybody watching, I think. So in some cases, I've just skipped over that and not done the, the video series. But um, I've got quite a few more of these because what's happening is on the island of Madeira, there is, I don't know how many rest restorers there are. I know one, that's me. Uh, I'm sure there's somebody else that just haven't uh, done anything to, to make themselves known. But uh, I'm not going to assume I'm the only one. But there's very few, there are very few doing this kind of work. So what's happening is people found out that I'm crazy about this as a hobby. And of course, suddenly you have friends of friends who have radios they want to restore. And of course, I always like doing them. So um, I've been doing quite a bit of radio, quite a bit of restoration of radios that aren't actually mine. Um, so I do try and, and, you know, get it done fairly quickly. It takes about a week if I'm doing it, uh, it just in the evenings. It's, it is a hobby after all. And um, so I don't really uh, ponder over it as much as I would on one of mine because there's no hurry then. So yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you do, uh, please subscribe and uh, I'll see you back soon. Bye for now.